During an event held by Goldman Sachs yesterday, Hasbro CEO Chris Cox, alongside CFO Gina Gutter, provided a look at the future direction of Dungeons & Dragons. The chat started off with Cox doubling down on his previous statements that Hasbro is going all in on digital, and that they are working with the best in the business on doing so. The talk started off with Cox taking credit for the growth of the Magic the Gathering brand under his leadership, noting an increase from $400 million to $1.1 billion in revenue since he started at Wizards of the Coast eight years ago. He proudly cited the success of Baldur's Gate 3 as one of the key reasons for the company's shift into digital. He also noted that people had been skeptical about the focus on digital games, saying, Could you even extend digitally as you are not Call of Duty or Need for Speed? Let's take a listen to a clip from the talk. I think the first question everyone would have asked, you know, certainly they asked me when I did occasional investor outreach when I was running Wizards is, gosh, do you even have brands that are relevant? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you guys aren't Call of Duty, you guys aren't Need for Speed, you guys aren't uh, <laughs> Slappy Bird. Um, and, you know, I think there was like a question mark on could you even extend digitally uh, into the space? This perspective seemingly overlooks the deep-rooted history of D&D in the digital realm. Notably, the franchise's digital journey began with the release of Pool of Radiance in 1988, and the enduring success of earlier titles like Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 set a solid foundation for the latest installment. Cox also explained that Hasbro aims to broaden Magic's and D&D's reach by incorporating more intellectual properties, with upcoming Final Fantasy and Marvel sets coming to MTG next year to appeal to diverse audiences, including older demographics and female gamers. Cox ended the chat with a rather ominous quote about using AI to revolutionize player engagement, from campaign creation to emergent storytelling. Let's take a listen to a clip from the conversation. Well, I think inside of uh, development, we've already been using AI, and most major developers have been using AI for years. Uh, it's mostly like a machine learning based AI or more of a proprietary based AI as opposed to a more general kind of like uh, chat GPT uh, kind of uh, approach. You know, we will deploy it significantly and liberally internally, uh, both as like a knowledge worker aid as, and as a development aid. Uh, I'm probably more excited though in terms of uh, the playful elements of AI. You know, um, if you just look at a typical D&D &D play, going back to kind of like the theme I had around, you know, don't be afraid of what your players are doing, embrace what your players are doing. If you look at like a typical D&D &D player, um, you know, I play with probably 30 or 40 people D&D &D regularly. Uh, there's not a single person who doesn't use AI somehow hmm. for either campaign development or character development or story ideas. Um, that's, a, that's a clear signal that we need to be embracing it. Uh, we need to do it carefully. We need to do it responsibly. We need to make sure we pay creators uh, for their work. And we need to make sure we're clear when something is AI generated. Uh, but the themes around, um, you know, using AI to enable user-generated content, using AI to uh, streamline new player introduction, um, and then uh, using AI for uh, emergent storytelling, I think you're going to see that across not just like our hardcore brands like D&D, &D, but across multiple uh, of our brands from kids to adults. Firstly, Cox's assertion that all 30 to 40 D&D &D players he knows use AI may be more indicative of his immediate circle rather than the broader community. While it's true that many dungeon masters and players do incorporate AI tools, a significant portion of the community remains skeptical or outright opposed to their use. This sentiment has been underscored by multiple controversies and the noticeable backlash against Wizards of the Coast regarding the use of AI. So there you have it. Chris Cox isn't just steering Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast towards a fully digital future, he also believes that embracing AI in D&D is inevitable. What do you think? Will we all be enjoying D&D as an AI-driven Baldur's Gate 3 clone in a few years? Or will the AI hype bubble burst before that happens? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, remember to subscribe for more tabletop news.